what we're going to do now is we're going to create the screwdriver shape that you can see here in front of you and we're going to do so by taking these 2d shapes that we've got at the back here and we're going to use them like ribs like sort of uh, how should I say a uh, meaningful cross sections so if we look at our example that we've got here you can see where some of those shapes actually line up with the 3d object and you can see that they are in fact their rib sections at important points and that's exactly what I've done here is I've just set up a few shapes and I thought okay uh, this one's going to be the uh, the back and then we're going to have the starting shape here of the handle and that'll be the end shape of the handle then we'll have a section in between which will be here and here and then maybe we'll have a little bit of a flange so that you don't sort of catch yourself or gnarl your fingers up uh, and that's going to be here and here then we'll have the the shaft of the screwdriver from there to there and then the head of the screwdriver at the end so that's all well and good but how do we create one of these mythical lofts to turn all of those rib shapes and those rib sections into a 3d object well what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to select the end shape the very very end shape the one at the very very beginning which in this case is the bottom of the screwdriver and what I'm then going to do is I'm going to say create and from my list instead of standard primitives I'm going to pick compound objects and you'll see that within your list of compound objects we've got loft so I'll click on loft and I'll now say get path and the path is this one singular line that goes all the way through and that's exactly what I'm going to use to begin with now what's happened here is I don't have this sort of wonderful shape that we've got down at the bottom there I've just got if I go F3 F4 or even just F3 in actual fact what I've got is I've got this first initial shape that's been sort of lofted all the way along that spline right to the very end and the reason why that is is because I haven't defined any other points where there should be cross sections so what I need to do is go to the top view zoom out a little way maybe press F3 and hopefully what you can see on your screens if I zoom in close enough is there's this sort of this yellow cross just here a yellow X and that denotes at what point we are along our path so here our path value is zero and if I just click that a little bit so that that X starts to move when it lines up with the first rib section that you can see here I'm going to say get shape and then I'll click on that shape and you can see here now what's happening is that the new shape there is like a morph gone between the circle and the new shape and that new shape has now been extruded all the way down to the end of the loft so what I need to do is I need to work my way along this shape by increasing my path value and hopefully you can see that little yellow cross whizzing its way down the shape until I get to here and I'll say get shape again and I'll click on there and that's just really unified between here and here that there is there's no change in the shape and what I'm going to do is I'll come back a bit say get shape and I'll pick this new shape so there's my handle I'll unify that shape by coming all the way down to the end here clicking get shape so there's unified that shape I'll move up a little bit further so the X is as close as it can be to this shape so again that's the neck we need to give a little bit of room there get the shape that's the new one and then a little bit further on and get shape again so you can see I've already got very very quickly as well I might add the basic shape of everything that I'm going to need here so going down and sorting out the end of the uh, the screwdriver I will go all the way towards oh, we don't quite want 100 percent let's just click back there we go so we'll unify the shaft and then we'll work on the head so get shape that one right the way to the end get shape that one so now what I'll do is I'll come out and I'll look at this oh, in 3d view press f3 there we go and the first thing I might notice is that this head is a little bit skewed here so what I'm going to do is I'll go to my modify tab 
and I'll uncheck the uh, little plus button there and I'll click on shape and I'll control click where these two shapes are for the head of the screwdriver and I'll press E for rotate and I will just rotate both of those now they should have rotated flat but they haven't so let's just come in here we should be able to say shape there we go that was the two shapes I'd obviously picked up on the wrong ones there we go and I'll just rotate those round and you can see now that they're absolutely flat down the shaft of the screwdriver so now that I've made that one example I'm going to do exactly what I did with the wine glasses I'm going to shift click a couple of copies over and I'm going to take this one and I'll scale him down so he'll be a lot more stubby maybe make him a little bit fatter as well and this one I'm going to make a little bit thinner a little bit narrower so you can see there already without a huge amount of effort I've already got a set of screwdrivers all from the one set of shapes and I think that's what we should really sort of try and push here is that once you've made one sort of set of shapes just simply by using those scale tools you can just create a whole collection and it's very very quick very very simple and very very easy so to go back over that what we've got here is we've got our shape and I can work my way along it my surface parameters here I want to smooth as well I also want to be able to apply mapping onto there so I'll click on that option we want to generate material IDs so yes we'll have that but we also have these skin parameters which are the shape parameters here so if I wanted to I could say well my path steps I'm going to reduce down and make those as minimal as possible which doesn't mean that this is very nice but it does mean that we can have a more efficient shape or I could say my shape steps I reduce those and again that comes down to an absolute minimum so even if we're working on something like a video game you can still use this technique to create these shapes and you get very very accurate looking shapes here or if we're not doing that we'll come up and I'll press 6 and 6 again and that will give me my nice sort of rendered shape I've got an option here to optimize it as best I can so you can see it's tried to uh, 3d studio max has tried to optimize that shape as best it can to reduce the polygon count down I can even set a linear interpolation here which I don't necessarily want to do and um, we can set adaptive path steps as well which to be honest with you when you look at that and you think yeah really my path steps if they're only six um, I maybe should have that set at adaptive so that I get the best results out possible so yeah I think I'll leave that and one other thing that we have which is uh, a little bit more advanced is something called the deformers now really you only want to get into using these deformers if you've just got one single shape because for example if I go to scale what I've got here is the scale is set at 100% from the start to the finish here and if I go around uh, inserting vertices into here I'm actually inserting new shape steps and this can be a little bit dangerous because if I take right at the very end which is down here if I take this keyframe point and I just pull it up what we're doing is we're kind of wedging the end of this um, I could also if I wanted to take that point and make it very narrow so in actual fact what we've got here is more of a, a pick type shape it's a very very small sort of cross section there so you do have to be quite careful with what you're doing because I can very very quickly if I'm not careful completely blow out this shape I mean that looks utterly weird um, but they are quite good fun they are quite interesting if I was going to be making text from uh, a 2d shape and not a 3d one I might consider using the deformers to try and bevel the edge of my text but really we're going to deal with that a little bit later on when we talk about creating 3d text for the moment what we've got here is a very very quick and a very very simple way of making some quite complex shapes using the loft modifier and starting more importantly with splines.